guys and girls and welcome to another episode of Coop Shed, a YouTube channel where I share reviews, tips and ideas and handy hints that I think might help you uh, to do with surfing, bodyboarding, um, things like that. And today I've, I've wanted to do uh, this tutorial, tutorial um, for a while now, uh, but I haven't had uh, the opportunity so now we do. Uh, it's all about removing a traction pad or tail pad from a surfboard. Um, I just haven't had a board that I've needed to take a tail pad off yet. Um, so now I've got one and I'm going to show you how to remove a traction pad, tail pad, whatever you want to call it, off your surfboard, hopefully uh, quickly and easily. So here we go. Right, so first things first, um, you should take the fins out of your board first. Um, that way you've got a nice uh, flat surface to work on. You can push on the board, move it around a bit. Um, and if you've got fins underneath, you might put pressure on the fins or they might just get in the way and in inhibit uh, you doing the job that you want to do. So that would be my first advice. Take off the fins. Uh, take off the leash uh, and that way you're sort of not hindered by anything that's in the way. Um, also because of the cleaning products that we're going to use on the board, uh, maybe if your board has any cracks uh, or dings around the tail pad or close by where you're going to be cleaning with these chemicals, uh, maybe seal them up, make sure the board is sealed with a bit of uh, resin bit of solar cure resin uh, and that way none of the the liquids are going to get into any cracks around um, while you're working. So this is the tail pad we're going to take off. Now first appearances you might think well there's nothing wrong with that tail pad there you know what are you doing taking it off but if you've seen my other video where I put a tail pad on a board you will know that you'll know by now that I'm quite fastidious about where my tail pad is on the board. Now this tail pad might work for other people where it is but I like to have my tail pad as far back as possible um, so there's about an inch there where it could go further back. I've just found with my feet with my foot placement um, moving my foot you know, an in, uh, only an inch or two can really affect um, how the board turns, uh, especially above the, the back fin. So I prefer to put my tail pad right back. So um, I'm going to get a new tail pad and put it so that the curve here gets right up against that uh, the leash anchor um, placement there. So yeah, there's about an inch there where it could have gone back. Now, like I said, I'm being fussy. For some people that might not matter, but for me, it's a nice, very, you know, very nice board. It's quite new. Um, so I just think I'll be happy if, with it back a little bit. So this is the one we're gonna take off. Now, we're gonna be using um, some chemicals. Uh, you need some terps get some mineral turpentine or you can also use um, an orange orange power um, it's a more organic citrus based cleaner um, it's less toxic so if that sort of stuff matters to you um, if you're worried about putting you know a harsh chemical like terps on your surfboard for some reason for the maybe the the finish you might not want to risk um, damaging it in any way, um, you can go the the organic um, stuff. It it works well, it's a little bit slower, but um, it still works well nonetheless and we'll get the glue off underneath once the tail pad's up. But more on that in a minute. So um, some people like to start from the uh, the block at the back. You can start from whichever end you like. Um, this one is quite new. This tail pad's quite newly applied, so it shouldn't be any problem. I hope I haven't jinxed myself. Um, but if you've got a really, really old 
um, tail pad. It can be quite hard to get off because the glue has become like rock hard over time. Um, hopefully the glue underneath this is still quite supple and it will peel up easily. And we're going to try and get them all off in in the one piece. So it looks like there's uh, that's one piece and that's one piece there. So it's two pieces. Hopefully we can get both of those up in uh, complete. But you, uh, if you've got an older one, don't be surprised if little bits start ripping off as you go. Um, with, if that's the case, you've just got to take your time and um, move very slowly as you peel them up and try not to have that happen. If it does happen, um, you, you soak the remaining bits that are still stuck on the board. You can soak them with a bit of Terps or the, the orange power stuff. Uh, with a rag or something, with the rag and just soak it, leave it sitting on there overnight and that'll, that'll loosen it up a bit. So I'm just going to try and get the edges here. You can see because it's still so new it's coming up quite easily so this should be pretty straightforward. So always keep the pressure where you're pulling quite close to the, where it's lifting. You don't want to pull from right up here. Keep pulling from down here. And that, that will make sure that you don't rip the, 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 an old dry bristle tail pad. It's, it's much less likely to rip in half and, and leave you with chunks on there. Patience is the key for this. Just take your time. It's always better. Sorry, there's three pieces there. Sorry, my mistake. There's a little spit there. And be careful also not to, you know, push on the board too hard. You don't want to ding your board by manhandling it. There we go. Look at that. So the glue is still quite supple. Um, on an older one this glue will be like yellow and rock hard sometimes. It will really um, have lost its uh, tackiness and that's when it can be a real problem. You can see there's some glue still left there, but that's okay because I'm going to show you how to get rid of that in a minute. It's a shame because it's a nice tail pad and it suits the curve of the board. It's a shame. but. Like I said, you know, I'm quite pedantic and I had to go. If you do have to push on the board, try and put it in, push on in an even, a spread out uh, force area. That way you're not you're not pushing any dents into the deck. This is quite a new board, so I'm really being a bit precious with it. Who am I kidding? I'm precious with most of my boards. There you go again. Still very tacky, so this has actually been quite a pleasant uh, tail pad removal process. And just be careful when you get to the blocks, this, this um, back block there. Um, sometimes it can rip because it's such a, a, because it's so much thicker. Um, they can just rip there, so it can be quite... Then you've got to pick off this big block, but um, 
most of the time it's okay but yeah just be aware of that especially yeah the older brittle ones they can be a real pain now some people um, just while I've got this angle there some people especially with the older tail pads um, they'll get a razor or a sharp um, implement and you get glue coming up in strands like big yellow strands of glue will come up with the pad um, and some people like to cut those as they as it gets peeled up you can sort of um, just work the work the razor along just cutting as you go uh, careful not to um, scratch the deck or uh, pierce the deck in any way of course but yeah that that can be a handy thing um, especially on and off with an older one if the glue is yellow and stringy um, yeah, you might want a blade to, as you lift, um, cut those strings of um, of glue, or even sort of scrape them off the deck as you as you're going. Right, so there we go. That was pretty painless. Um, now you might have noticed in a, in a few of my videos, I try and stress the importance of minimising waste. Um, the surf industry, uh, as much as I hate to admit it, it creates a lot of waste products um, from plastic that clothes arrive in the surf shops in um, to you know surfboards which break and, and, and then you've just got chunks of foam at the tip. Um, we really need to make an effort to minimise how much rubber and plastic and fiberglass and toxic chemicals that we're putting into the uh, into landfill because as surfers. Um, you know we enjoy a natural environment and I think it's in our best interests for us and everyone to um, to preserve these so what I'm getting at is these I don't know what you can come up with you might be able to recycle these if you can get them off in one piece you might be able to use them I don't know in some way um, there might be you can chuck them on your board rack cut it up use it as bits of foam stick it on your board rack to stop your boards hitting on the on the dividers or something, just try and think of a way you can uh, recycle these. Um, maybe something in your car, maybe in your wagon, where the surfboards hit on the side, you can chuck a bit of that on the, and it might stop it rubbing on the, or banging, I don't know. But try and think of a way where you can recycle those instead of chucking them straight in the bin. Okay, so you can see we've got some glue there. Um, we're pretty, pretty lucky this time. The only time we didn't have a clean rip was there where it's ripped a bit of the tail pad up. But that's pretty good. So now we move on to our uh, turps or our citrus cleaner. This is Sticky Spot and Goo Dissolver. There's also Goo Remover. I think there's one called Goo Remover. This one's a Planet Arc one, so I don't know, jumped out at me. But um, yeah, now you want to sort of get these wet. You want to soak them a little bit so that they come up quite easy. So, I've just got an old rag. It's just an old rag. And all I'm doing is just a little bit of turps, like that. And then I just sort of wet the glue a bit. And because this glue is so new, it should be okay. But if you have really old yellow or dried glue, um, you might want to soak it overnight. As in, get this, get a rag or something, a cloth, really soaking with turps or the or the natural um, glue remover, and just leave it on there. Maybe even uh, you could put a, some tissues or paper towel there over that and then just wet the paper towel with the turps or the organic remover and then just let it sit there overnight because that old stuff is really hard and it will take a while for it to, um, to have a bit of give. So yeah, just going to wet that up. Just sort of around the edges, wherever there's going to be an edge where you sort of the chemical's going to get in and work, it's, do its thing. 
Um, you can already see it's starting to sort of peel up there. So that one's come off straight away, like that. So, yeah, you just do that basically until it comes up. You can kind of peel it up with your fingernail. Just remember not to push too hard. You want to let the chemical do its thing. You don't want to. You don't want to be putting nail marks or uh, dents in your board just from trying to get some glue off. Um, you can see that's already loosened it. Yeah. I'll use some of this to show you. Um, so, sort of you just, if you want to use something like this, you just dab it on like that. You can let it sit for a while, let it do its thing. That's how that stuff works. The only thing I've found with the with the organic stuff is that it will make rolls of the glue, like you'll get this really um, gacky like ball um, that can be quite hard. It'll roll. It'll still stick to the board and move around the board. Um, that's why I thought I'd give Terps a go this time. They both do. Um, work it's just I've found the the organic one because it's less toxic it tends to ball up now you can see how well that um, terps has, has brought off the uh, the glue there's a little bit there um, but I'm going to clean that in a second. So I can't stress to you enough, if you're going to put another tail pad on, you need to make sure this is spotless. Um, because any any residue left like that uh, won't, it will, it will inhibit the new tail pad's ability to bond with the board. Um, I guess even if you're not going to use a tail pad uh, again, it probably um, help to give it a good clean as well because you're going to apply wax on top of it. You also don't want any chemicals sitting on top of the deck. So once you've cleaned it off with terps or the organic stuff, um, wash it down with a little bit of um, soapy water with a, a rag or a sponge. Uh, and that way, not only is it clean and going to dry and be ready for um, a tail pad or wax, it stops any chemical residue that you've got on top of the board um, going into the ocean when you when you take the board out into the ocean. So I'm just going to give it a little clean. Right, so there we are. Um, nice and clean, uh, ready for a bit of soapy water and a, a sponge or a rag to wipe down any uh, chemical and make sure that there's a nice clean surface for a new tail pad or wax to go on. Uh, you might have noticed the board I'm working on. Uh, it's a new Machado Glazer uh, in LFT construction by Firewire. Uh, this one's a 5.8. Um, if you're interested in this board and want to know how it goes, I'm going to throw up a review of this uh, soon. Once the new tail pad's on and I take it for a spin, I'm going to give you a review on what I, on how I went and what I think of the board. So um, stay tuned for that one on the channel. So there you go, that one's ready to go. I'm just going to go clean it with a bit of um, soapy water and dry it and away we go. Right, so there we go. We've got a nice clean tail area there to either apply another tail pad or just simply wax it up. Um, yeah, so a couple of tips to remember. You might need to use a razor for the old um, glue, um, try terps or a citrus based goo remover. Um, and make sure you wash the deck with uh, water, soapy water when you finish. That way it's going to remove any uh, chemicals which are designed to 
cut through glue uh, so that when you do put a new tail pad on it's going to adhere to the deck cleanly and you're not going to have it come off later on. Alright so it's ready to go I'll put a new tail pad on it um, like I said if you want to see a review of the new glazer, the firewire glazer by um, Machado and his mate Todd Glaser, 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 I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, in LFT construction, just check back on the channel soon. I'm going to have a review of it. It's a very nice looking board, one that I'm very uh, eager to give a try, and I'll let you guys know how it goes shortly. Um, if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments below. If you have any other ideas on how to remove a tail pad quickly and easily, um, leave them in the comments. Uh, I'm interested to see other techniques you guys might have um, that, that might help me and others. Uh, if you found this helpful, hit like. Uh, and if you want to see more tips like that or surfboard reviews, bodyboard reviews, anything I can come up with that I think might be helpful to you out there um, yeah just hit subscribe and I'll see you next time on Cookshed thanks for dropping in catch ya